JD, I think we gotta survive it. Are you okay? What is this? Our stuff left? What? Oh, oh, it's just a trap for him. I know you're not talking to me. So if you were talking to me, you'd have the face busted right now. You hear me? Okay. And if you put your hand up. All right, let's get everybody ready now. Right. Now, reminding the zombies. First of all, you do need ear protection. You will be shooting guns. Right. Secondly, okay. when you are Be shot, this you do <laughs> take a hit and fall down, you, and then you get up again. Do but you do Grab play it. being hit by a bullet that shoot at you. It. you. It looks she Our does it herself. Our task handling do the guns. Uh, uh, to be reminded, do me. not She's ever point at eyes, heads, anything don't above go. waist don't level. Okay. Do not shoot at zombies if they're any closer than 10 feet to you. Okay. Then it flips. It's, okay, let me see. This is, all, this is only the move is this. Everybody understand? Stand by, one second. Beginning position is the far position. It takes five. Ah! Cut. 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 Okay, yeah, cool. Cut again. Cut again. Stay down. She's crazy. Action. Three, two, one, go! See, they tried to cover my luscious lips, you know, and make them look all dead and corroded. That's because they're just so red. So beautiful lips. <laughs> to his actor because what if the actor didn't like the direction that the director was giving then you'd have your face all shoved up in his and yeah. then I think that's really <laughs> 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 it's okay I'm with a little smile once in a while Being the production designer and the costume designer really came into um, into its own because I knew what I was designing with the sets and I could then create a whole image, a complete image. Everything had this wonderful kind of monochromatic shine to it. When you first see them, they all look the same. All these black commandos, they've got these gas masks on that we mirrored the actual uh, glass in here so you couldn't see their eyes, which is always quite scary. But then as you get to see each one of them individually, each one has got a slightly individualized costume. 
same. The back on each one is different. They were armed to the teeth as well with guns. We took ordinary guns because we wanted them to be real. This communication thing was in here, which was an adapted mobile phone. Um, when they wanted to go through doorways, uh, they had these jack plugs here that uh, they could pull out from their costume and they jack into a doorway and make it open. There was one dress that was so good because it was a mini skirt and the dress together and we wanted to show my legs, we wanted to show my body because she fights and, and it's nice to be able to see somebody's body when they're doing stunts and doing fights and seeing the shape of things. <laughs> By the end, she's this real kick-ass, sexy, you know, kicking all, jumping commando. It's fantastic. By wearing that dress, I gave her a lot of problems because, you know, she had bare arms, so you can't wear pants. For example, in the closing sequence where she's fighting the creature, she's, like, getting crashed all over the place. She's rolling around. She's on bare metal gratings, getting dragged across them. At the end of the movie, her character, Alice, is covered in bruises and cuts. And I've got to tell you, you know, those cuts and bruises, they're not makeup. You know, they're there for real. That's how she ended up at the end of the film. What I like about her is she's just, you know, a go-getter. Kind of like, I don't care. And she gets to shoot a machine gun and... Come on I mean, it's like being a kid and playing commando. Only thing, you never had the realistic toys, like, you know, machine guns with dummy bullets in them and, you know, crazy little gadgets and gears that you get to, you know, put on. It really does give you this intense feel. We started off with um the, the first visuals of the creature from the game and then increased it in size, made it more predatory, made it much more aggressive. This creature has never been made before. With its brain popping out and it's got the crazy fangs of a dog, you know, just protruding out of its spotted gums. I mean, the detail on this creature is just amazing. We wanted to make it a lot more powerful, a lot more threatening. We actually built two main creatures. One was a more gross movement for battering ram. He was quite heavy steel inside him, reinforced, and we could throw him at windows and doors. The second one was a much more controlled one. Uh, radio control face, the jaw splits, the two teeth at the front come out, move around independently and together. The head is a much more controlled movement. The puppeteer at the back of the creature, every movement that he does um, is directly corresponds to the front end of the creature. The movements of it are based around real animals. The jaw drops and splits like an anaconda and to accommodate the tongue. It's, it's, a lot of it is all based on real stuff. You know, the, the, the way the skin's been sculpted is based on anatomical real skin. It's because it's a mixture of real creatures that's been put together genetically.
stick. That totally looks real. That's great. That looks like it's really, really there. I think that's why I suddenly feel like, you know, when you get to the boil shot, it's a different it's tongue because yeah. it looks completely different. You know, because it's scattered all the way. I think so, yeah. Otherwise, it just looks like two completely different tongues. So that she's aiming at that. Yet when she hits, mm -hmm. it looks like that. Mm -hmm. So I was glimpsing it. I just thought if we just tipped up slightly, we'd be able to see the brain, but then come low enough so that we get the teeth action as he rears back. Exactly the position, how far they can come out. Scared by himself. Your arm is much bigger. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. For him. Disturbing, and then you can go home and have a nice cup of cocoa. What's that? Kaplan, oh, wait. Get him out of there. happening in there. Kaplan, you gotta hurry. You gotta Mom. help them. What happens is the laser turns into a grid and passes through his body, just dicing him effectively. So we started with the actor in a position that we liked for the dicing. Then what we did was we built a full-scale model of him. This is where his face will fall apart in the foreground. You can see the background's a little out of focus, but the idea is that now this will go out of focus and the focus will go back to the background action. The idea with the head is that we have a foreground shot. So if you were the camera looking at me and I was in the foreground, in the background over my right shoulder, over the actor's right shoulder, you'll see my face like this and you'll see a piece of it fall off. One, two, three. And then we had that full-scale model cubed and fall apart. And you see that happen. But rather than see it happen in miniature or see it happen digital, you see it effectively happen for real. You can see all the green poles going in. Inside those sleeves are other sleeves. They're connected in the back end so that we can pull out different parts, the men can pull out different parts of the body so they can fall and we can film it all. But this will be in the background, his back part has a reflection. So even though we're looking at his face, in the background we'll see this reflection on the wall so we have to shoot his backside. I mean, they're going to cut me up. They're going to slice me. Pulled me onto the floor in a bag. The little bag, I'm surprised. Shit. Does this bit? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the shot, just say lower your hand, and then we'll have uh, clean plates on him without his hand. Without having my hand. Okay. Well, we'll just do the action for you while he keeps his arms down. Yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. When we're done, we're going to peel off pieces from here. You'll do the move again just to get empty yeah. sets. First, we'll peel off the medic. Okay. Then we'll move a bag. Then we'll. But move can we just see the end position first? Yeah. See the end position. Hey, conscious. We're going into shot. Stay away. Uh, Well, I get my head cut off. <laughs>
which was which was really upsetting. <laughs> um, obviously, I had to have a cast made of my head. But when I saw it, it was really it was really upsetting to see yourself dead, but you know, perfectly replicated. The first time I see the laser cut a slice of her throat, it's the first shot. We'll be adding blood to this area. All right. Good 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 Everybody, you need to be that step out. Okay. 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 That camera we're doing in case now. Right. Yes. And we go back to 24 frames of Yeah. So we're going to take this head off the body, pull it off the blue screen. And there he goes. something new you know if people want to see something new if they've played the game they want to go to a different place now um, it's almost like doing a kind of live action version of a, a new version of the game that's too cartoony and tried to use just always contemporary technology. We've tried to avoid anything that's too obviously science fiction. We went back to what is available technology and we've used that. We also visited a lot of contemporary bunkers. We went to some nuclear bunkers in England. Nuclear bunkers in uh, Germany, and um, you know, some from the 60s, some from the 70s, and some that were only built uh, about 10 or 12 years ago. There's a couple of contemporary Japanese architects who just do the most wonderful buildings above ground um, in concrete, and it's you know it was a, a perfect look to use for below ground. It looks very strong, and uh, you know so we use that as inspiration, just that kind of pre-stressed concrete look. The shape of the control room is a triangle, and partly that was inspired because there are big scenes in there that uh, there's a lot of talk goes on in them. And so you needed to have some interesting angles, and the shape of that room, it, you know, really gave you that. And we set the desk down slightly so that you'd have an eye line straight through from the corridor, and you'd be able to see all the people. One of the big things that, uh, that we really wanted to achieve with the design of this film was the whole idea of labyrinths. When you play the game, you walk down corridors, they go around corners, you never know what's going to be around that corridor. spaces and the angles are designed to be very disorienting and that's one of the big things we wanted to take from the game. The 
sets, I've very consciously tried to design everything to be like, either like a labyrinth or to be at least very kind of visually disorienting so that you don't quite, you can't get a, quite a grasp on where you are. is a service train for this secret organization that's underground and the duty of the train is to move cargo from the dock into the laboratory. A real train was used for the sets and for the people to get in. The train was quite a big big number for us. It was actually the um, pretty much the biggest thing we had to do on the film, not in terms of uh, size, but just in terms of the amount of engineering that went into it and what it had to do. The tracks uh, underneath here were too deep for the train, so we had to build the whole thing up about two or three feet and build about two or three hundred meters of rostrum that were strong enough to hold a 12-ton train. Um, a whole miniature unit that's uh, back in London that has taken the designs from the train and has built our train exactly in miniature. Again, the train is built to match the train in the movie on the set. Pieces have been taken off during the photography and pieces are taken off during the wreck, but it's an eighth scale train. The track started down there and came the whole uh, 150 feet here, which in scale would have been 1,200 feet of a real train. It was driven by wires, by, by a, a drill. <laughs> we had two drills. One was marked train, and one was marked camera. And when the train takes off in the set, we cut to a shot here where it continues and goes into the tunnel. So it goes from real to fake. Hey guys, it's Lisa with a cool movie extra fact now. Rick Baker is one of the most well-known makeup artists in the film industry. His work has been used in such films as Star Wars, King Kong, The Exorcist, Videodrome, Men in Black, The Ring and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. But it was his work on An American Werewolf in London which caused the Academy Awards to create a whole new category for makeup effects just so Baker could get his golden statue for his efforts. As of 2018, Baker has won that award seven times. Do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself in the shop section under the video.